How does Spokane stack up to other cities of similar sizes and cities in the region? That's the question we're going to try and answer today. There's a great article that was written by the Inlander, a local newspaper here in Spokane, that compared 10 different cities uh, around the country, whether they have a similar population size to Spokane or they're just another large city in the area. So they used Spokane as the Spokane Coeur d'Alene Metro because uh, they were comparing metro areas. So they can get a bigger picture of populations that uh, the economy is intertwined. Our, our, the Coeur d'Alene economy is intertwined with the Spokane economy. And so they did that with all of the other places as well. If they had any small towns around there that was intertwined, they included data from those areas. So there's about 20 different data points here that we're gonna go through. And I think this is just really insightful. Uh, there's a lot of great conversation going on in my comment section about some of these things. And I think having the data to look at and compare Spokane to other places across the country will be super informative. So let's jump into my screen here and take a look. Um, I think something that they said at the beginning of the article was really powerful. I'm just going to read it really quick. But the Spokane and the Inland Northwest have a bit of an identity issue. Are we a city or are we a refuge for people fleeing, to, uh, fleeing cities? Do we enjoy an inviolable quality of life? Or do we struggle to pay the bills? Do we value our isolation from the rest of the world? Or do we celebrate the many people who call this place home? Are we growing or have Spokane's best days pass us by? I think this is but well, this is the conversation that's going on. Is Spokane a great place? Is it a bad place? There's a lot of conversation from people that have lived here for a long time that think it's going downhill, or there's people that are moving here that think it's the holy grail compared to where they're coming from. So let's look at this data here, see, look with open eyes, be open to this information and see how it compares. So taking a look at population, Spokane is the fourth largest city on here. So we have Spokane, Boise, Toledo, Ohio, Madison, Wisconsin, Portland, Maine, Reno, Nevada, Jackson, Mississippi, Seattle, Portland, and then North Carolina, uh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and North Carolina. So uh, Boise, Seattle, Portland, those are our regional larger cities. Um, and so they're not gonna be great data points in terms of how do we compare, but Reno and, and the rest all are similarly uh, sized cities within 100,000 people either way. Spokane is on the slightly larger side of those cities. Um, so looking, the next st uh, statistic here is the percentage of white residents and foreign born residents. And so 4.6% of residents uh, were born outside of the US, but 81% of residents in Spokane are white. We are the second uh, least diverse place out of the list here, Portland, Maine at 88%. Someone's, some places that I thought were kind of interesting is just uh, the diversity that is prevalent in Seattle and Reno um, being similar to that of like Durham uh, and Jackson. So I thought that was just kind of uh, interesting there. Uh, in my 10 reasons not to move to Spokane, I have a video that maybe many of you have watched. Uh, I talked about diversity. It led to some big conversations in the comments there. I didn't say anything for or against, pro, uh, good, bad, ugly. Literally just read these statistics. So we'll see what happens uh, with this video here. Uh, percentage of residents 25 and older with a college degree. Spokane is the second least educated of the 10 cities. We have 30.5% of residents uh, above 25 with a college degree. Toledo is just under us, but many cities are far exceeding that. Um, and I think this is kind of interesting based on a statistic we'll look at later. Curious as to why this is still so low. Um, Spokane is the fourth least dense out of all these places. So this is kind of a cool visual, but it shows how many people are packed into one square mile. So the most dense is Seattle at 683 people per square mile. Spokane is the fourth, at, uh, fourth least at 139. Uh, similarly sized city, just a little bit bigger. Toledo's at almost 400 people. Um, very interesting there. Median household income in Spokane is at 65,000. We are the third uh, lowest level of income here in this. Uh, so we're number seven on the list. Toledo and Jackson are below us, but many of our sister cities across the country are making about $10,000 per person more than we are. Uh, population growth. Um, everybody knows that Spokane is growing, but how much are we growing compared to these other places? In the last 10 years, Spokane has grown 11%, which is a lot compared to some of these places, like Jackson's actually lost people over the last 10 years. Toledo, it's the Midwest, 1%. That just makes sense for the Midwest in some of those spots. In terms of the last 10 years, we're not that bad compared to a lot of these other comparably sized cities. Uh, 15 for Durham, 24 for Boise, 12, 15, 16, 12. So the one thing we can notice is that we are still strong in the last year when the majority of these have had, uh, besides Boise, have seen a, a great drop in the percentage 
of people moving in the last year or in the greater city, the larger city, Seattle and Portland, the people that are actually moving away. So then related to that population change is the percentage of change in home value. Spokane was one of the highest, the second highest at 95%. Boise saw 117% in home value over the last five years. But if you can, if you look at the last year and what's happening, we are starting to level out and compare to a lot of these other cities. Boise actually has dropped quite a bit. They're only saw it at 2.8%. I think we might be a little bit behind. I'm not sure exactly what time of year this data was pulled because this 15.6% kind of is a little bit of data from like 12 months ago versus maybe even six months ago versus what's happening right now. I mean, this is really like a negative, uh, we're, in today's numbers, this is a, a negative number. This was probably negative 3%. Um, in terms of home growth of the last year, but not anything crazy uh, compared to other markets here, uh, similarly sized, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're looking at rent in Spokane, it's actually not that bad compared to the rest of these places. I mean, Portland, Maine is uh, at $2,200. That is insane. They are more expensive than Seattle, more than double the size. But overall, we are the third cheapest for rent in all these major markets. So even though the story is that rent is incredibly unaffordable, if you were to move to a similarly sized city across the country, it would be less affordable actually. Now we get into some crime statistics here. So a lot of you will ask me like what my opinions on a neighborhood are or if it's good or bad. I can't answer that. I can read this article to you though, and we and you can make your own decisions based on that. But this next little section here is talking about the fentanyl epidemic, which is prevalent across the entire country. But here in Spokane, it's, it's, it's an issue, it's happening. Um, if you did not watch the News 4 Now, go check them out on YouTube. It's the local Channel 4 news station. They did a whole five minute piece on the state of downtown, um, what it's like being a police officer downtown, what are they seeing, all that kind of stuff. That was a really good video. So after this, go check that out and you can actually uh, just kind of follow along a police officer and see what they're dealing with. But um, in terms of how Spokane compares, there was 126 deaths last year from fentanyl overdose. Seattle had 385. And so really we have to look at this in a percentage. So in terms of how Spokane compares, we are ninth and how this is run. So, I mean, if you take the number of deaths divided by the population, uh, Toledo is the worst with the most deaths per person per capita. Spokane is the second worst. I am just curious about how this data is run just because factoring in how the population growth or the population was gathered. Plus this says right here that not every fentanyl involved death is uh, categorized as a death by opioid or anything like that. So I'm just surprised to see that like Seattle out of percentage wise is like one of the best. And out of 4 million people, there's 385 fentanyl deaths. Not to say that Spokane, or Spokane is better than Seattle. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just feel like for a population that is like 10X what Spokane is, I'm surprised that their fentanyl deaths are so low. I'm just curious about that. But into a lighter topic, looking at the environment around Spokane and the proximity to mountain ranges, we're like the third best out of this, 34 miles to uh, the near ski resort, Mount Spokane. Plus we got like five others in the area. If you like the mountains and you like skiing, don't move to Jackson. It's 346 miles to the nearest ski resort. So the tallest building is our Bank of America building, which is pretty uh, pretty short comparatively to the rest of these. But this is really a funny tidbit. Spokane was mentioned in How I Met Your Mother when there was a fictional 78-story G&B tower that was built um, by the I can't, Ted, I think his name was. Um, that never got built, that didn't happen. But there is rumor that we will get a taller building in Spokane in a few different spots. I mean, there's a new permit pulled like every year, so we'll see when that happens. Uh, price of a bus ticket in Spokane is uh, pretty similar to every other place. It's about $2 uh, for a ride, and it, it just depends on, we are, that gets you two hours here. Some places that's just one, uh, one ride. And I just like to see that our map is fairly colored in, it's very accessible, which I think is great comparatively to a few of these other ones that are a little thin, thinned out. One thing that people love about Spokane is that we avoid major natural disasters. Um, the only thing we have to deal with is wildfire smoke in the summer, which kind of sucks, but we're not dealing with anything like tornadoes, nor'easter, floods, hurricanes, anything like that. But if you have been to Boise and you have experienced a natural disaster level of grasshoppers, I would love to know what that is like. Please leave a comment down below because that sounds crazy and very interesting. A uh, number of major hospitals, Spokane is on par with all major cities in this. Uh, we have three large hospitals in the area, same as Seattle. I know Seattle is probably much bigger than ours, but uh, something I always say is that medical here in Spokane is great and very accessible. 
Uh, and then number of universities, this kind of goes back to the number of educated people. I think it's kind of weird that we have four universities, which is greater than a lot of these places. And we are the lowest in number of educated people per capita. I just don't, I'm curious to know if, are people getting their education and leaving Spokane? Are they not finishing? I, yeah, I don't know. There's a few factors that I'm curious about and, and more interested in wondering why we are so low on the education when we have so many schools here. And uh, now we get to jump into a little bit more of the crime statistics. I can just read these to you and you can take it for what it is. But car thefts reported in 2021, Spokane is the only uh, place on here that has gone down in for, between 2019 and 2021. 10% decrease in Spokane. Some places are seeing a massive increase, Portland 40%, Seattle 35%, uh, Toledo 40% increase, Madison a 30% increase. So in terms of petty crimes, uh, we generally tend to be a little bit lower, but in terms of violent crime, sometimes we tend to be a little bit higher. Um, number of cops in Spokane, 356. Uh, Jackson is a smaller population than us and they have 400. So I would love to see the Spokane Police Department get up to about 400 and just bring in that police presence. We just need more police to come over here um, and, and start working. I know our, our mayor is very supportive of that and, and it's worked uh, to an extent. I think that number has gone up um, recently. And then people killed by police since 2015. I thought this number was incredibly surprising. Um, 18 in Spokane, which is on par with Seattle and Portland being populations that are far above. Um, in Boise at 800,000 people was 13. So I thought this was very interesting, really high number, really surprising. Not sure what the all those incidents are, what the reasons are, but uh, that's definitely a high number. Um, and then homicides in 2021 in Spokane, including people killed by police. We were kind of in the middle here. We're at 40 places like Jackson, which is a lot smaller than Spokane's at 155 for homicides. That's crazy. It's, uh, higher than Seattle. Portland's at 90. And then some of the lowest, quote unquote, safest places would be Boise, Madison, and Portland, Maine there with very few homicides uh, in 2021. And then the last fun fact here is that it says that the last sitting president to visit Spokane was George W. Bush, although I'm pretty positive Trump visited uh, Fairchild Air Force Base when he was running. Uh, so I don't think that's true. But I thought this was a very interesting article. If you want to read it, it's down in the description. Uh, if you want to go and look at the details a little bit more, but I think it's super interesting to actually just compare data to other places, see how Spokane uh, is hanging on there, see how we're doing in comparison, and then you can make a decision again if Spokane is the right place for you. If you are looking for more information or you're moving to the area, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. There's a link in the description where you can schedule a meeting directly on my calendar at a time that's convenient for you. I would love to be your Spokane real estate resource. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video, but before you go, you might want to know your 10 reasons you should not move to Spokane.